Hey everyone, Eric Watson here, freelance writer, player of games, writer of words, recorder of videos, and tabletop role-playing aficionado. Welcome to another DM's Guild review, my written and video view series. Take a look at the adventures and supplemental material at the Dungeon Masters Guild website. This video will be reviewing the player supplement Feats Don't Fail Me Now, designed by Gordon McAlpin, M.T. Black, Andrew Kaywood, Jeremy Forbing, Laura Herzbrunner, and Chris Sims. A review copy has been provided for the purposes of this review. If you enjoy my videos, consider using my affiliate links if you're online shopping. Supporting me via patreon.com slash roguewatson. Shoutouts to Platinum Patrons, Joe, Will, Tiny Dancer, Manuel, Wizard, Princess, Christopher, Star, Loverly, Thomas, Eldugs92, Ian, James, Captain Mike, Jeremy, Adam, and Leroy. And gold Patrons, RPG, Papercrafts, Charming Grenade, Marcos, David Vicente, Gilberto, Dead Lizard, Lounge, Sam, Arash, Lumpy Spuds, Jerome, Fatboy619, Sklenia, Nick, Party McButterpants, and Blood Angel Veronis. Thank you all very much for your support. Now, if I remember correctly, feats are actually a variant rule... Uh, that players can choose to take a feat every four levels or take an ability score improvement, the ASI. And I'm sure there's a lot of theory crafting threads that basically state most of the time that ASI is the superior choice. It is a boring choice because I think feats are a lot of fun. On the one hand, I'm glad 5th edition moved away from the feat heaviness that was 3rd uh, edition, which is the other edition I've got more experience with just from Neverwinter Nights. Uh, that one was all about like having to make sure you had the prerequisite of the stats and you took certain feats at certain levels so you could really bring your character online. And 5th edition is less about that, but savvy players, which a lot of D&D players certainly are, uh, can take full advantage of many very powerful, some might say game-breakingly powerful feats like a great weapon master or sharpshooter or the ones that just everybody takes like um resilient in constitution to get that con save alert to avoid being surprised uh tough just to get more hit points lucky to be able to re-roll those uh, ones um so i think the idea behind feats is solid but a lot of the feats end up being i think a lot of tables see the same feats over and over and over again and kind of similar to how different builds work so a fun solution that don't fail, uh, feats don't fail me now offers are feats that are kind of more tied to role playing and character personality rather than like min maxi mechanics. And I would suspect, I would go as far to guess that most of these feats, the idea, the concept was created first, and then the mechanics were created afterwards. Whereas some feats you can say like, well, maybe I want my character to be able to do this what would be the reason behind that? Whereas here, I think a lot of these were um, just fun character ideas that helped define a character. And then, okay, how does this actually work in game? And we can give you different uh, mechanical benefits. I, In terms of balancing, that's a very hard thing to do for feats because even in the official material in the player's handbook, you've got feats that are next to useless, like Keen Mind and... Uh, I think it's linguistic, uh, like stuff like lightly armored and, and the weapon mastery one because you already pretty much have most proficiencies that you need built into all the different character classes. There's a lot of just straight up useless feats. And then there's the ones I mentioned before, which are so incredibly powerful and helpful that almost everybody takes them all the time. So how do you balance that? Um, and it's something I, I, I struggle to comment on e even from a critical standpoint is I don't know how to look at a feat and say this feels too powerful or this feels too weak because the standard that I have already runs the gamut. This is an extremely attractive product. Uh, Gordon McAlpin has amazing art that you get to see throughout. By the way, uh, he designed my favorite product of last year. Um, I fully recommend watching uh, that review and, and checking that out, but a huge fan of... Uh, his work and his artwork, which we get original artwork throughout uh, this product that I absolutely adore. And we get over 40 feats. In fact, I think there's 50 total, but the 50th is technically in an appendix because whatever reason it was deemed a little bit too much, I guess, even for this. Um, there's a really nice variety of feats that grant you new abilities in combat. There's a variety of feats that are uh, designed specifically to help like your teammates out. There are uh, feats that are only for certain, uh, you know, character classes or races or for certain builds. I love that there are even some feats that are designed if you have a stat that's lower. It's a prerequisite where you have to have a certain number or less to be able to take that feat, which is absolutely incredible. 
Um, so we're going to run through some examples here. So for uh, ones that give you some new abilities you can use in combat, we've got Fiendish Facade, Superhero Pose, Super Nice, Weak Stomach, which lets you projectile vomit as a reaction. My personal favorite is Earworm of that group, um, which as an action, you can basically sing a catchy song, an infectious melody, if you will. And then a target within 60 feet has to make a wisdom save based on your performance modifier or they are charmed by you. And then you can keep concentrating on it and use it as a essentially a bonus action each round to keep up that charming effect, although it ends if it takes any damage. But basically for your bonus action allows you to take out an enemy out of the fight, provided they can, uh, I believe the caveat is they have to hear and understand you. So they have to have, I guess, a certain amount of, uh, I guess, understand... Ooh, would you say you have to have the same language? Because I've had I've had songs stuck in my head that were not in English, so that would be an interesting caveat. Maybe it needs a little parameter there. But I think that's a fun idea, and you all get that. And that's kind of what I'm getting here. Is a lot of the stuff is it is jokey, and it's very nudge nudge, wink wink, with all these different abilities and things. But the mechanics are actually pretty sound. This is not a joke book. It's it is still a supplement that is very funny and humorous, and that is and the undercurrent throughout the entire list of 40 plus feats, but it's not complete and, and it's enjoyable to read. A lot of them are, there's jokes in the text as well. Uh, for example, herbalist uh, is about just getting high with your friends. And there's some jokes about that. You can perform a ritual, you know, even, even the herbalist is in quotes, you can perform a ritual with ghost of one hour whenever you rest and you all gain, uh, or you regain hit points uh, equal to your proficiency bonus, just as a little extra bit. A lot of them are, are character defining and really let you set your character apart at the beginning, which is why I love and will introduce in my campaigns going forward that every character can choose a feat at level one. And this supplement would really benefit that ability because a lot of these are like who your character is. For example, goth phase, you're a goth. And I love that you have disadvantage on saves again uh, that have to do with vampires. Um, but you gain some uh, different proficiency bonuses to uh, arcane history and religion checks dealing with you know the dark arts type things uh, heart of fur basically you have a fursona and that gives you advantage on uh, dealing with animals that have to do with your uh, the animal that you're wearing as well as gaining um, like bludgeoning or slashing damage because you're literally wearing a giant suit you know these help define your character and it would be a shame to wait to level four to be able to actually use those so I think that's a, a really neat um, side thing that I would mention is, hey, let players choose some of these at level one, and I don't, I just don't think it's that game break. I mean, already variant human can do that, and this just allows players to not have to pick human and pick more fun races, essentially. Warforged, for example, at level one would be amazing, more than meets the eye. Let's you be a goddamn transformer, which a really fun artwork down here. Uh, literally, you can just transform into a vehicle. <laughs> I love, as you all can't see it, but I have literally a bookshelf uh, to one side of me and a bookshelf to the other side, and they are about 70% full of Transformer action figures, including some that date back to the 1980s. So obviously I would love to play a fucking Transformer uh, Warforged in my D&D campaign. It would be incredible. Swearing Master would be very appropriate for me because I swear all the time in these reviews and my streams. So I could use it as a bonus action to swear and gain temporary hit points. Or I could swear uh, as, let's see, fail an ability check. Uh, to swear yourself and re-roll the d20. I love that. A lot of them require you to role play as part of the ability. So for example, um, one of my favorites is Combat Melodramatist, which you, uh, whenever an ally reaches zero hit points, you have to shout no <laughs> as your reaction. Uh, and you can either shout, don't you die on me, which allows you, which this is actually might be too powerful, but allows the player who just went down to zero hit points Immediately, they gain 1d4 plus charisma modifier in hit points. They immediately pop back up as part of your reaction. That's really powerful. I would use that every time. Versus I will avenge you, which is odd that the choice is you can pop your teammate up or just grant advantage on attack rolls until your next turn. Um, but that's a funny concept that you have to like get in the role-playing aspect and actually like say those words and phrase. Don't I know you is a really funny one where you make a charisma check. You have to say, don't I know you? And then you roll a d8. Here's what's interesting. If it's an even then you add the result to the check. Uh, and if it's an odd, you subtract it because knowing somebody uh, it may help you or may not help you. <laughs> it could be uh, it could be a friend or it could be an enemy or somebody you wronged. I love that little twist about it. And then whether you succeed or fail on the check is depending on what your relationship is with the NPC. So that's a that's a really fun idea here. It's, it's really well done. Um, 
the oh, stupefying ignorance. Uh, this is one that requires. So one of my favorite board games is Role Player, R O L L, which uh, you are just it's you get a character sheet and you're just trying to build out a character and you got different parameters you have to do. And I won't go into the whole board game. It's a great game. Um, but one of the things that can occur is if you have really low stats, usually you're trying to get high stats, obviously, when you're building a character. But if you have low stats, you can gain cards that specifically state, hey, you gain more victory points at the end if you have, like, a really low... And one of them is, like, ignorance or something. If you got a low, you know, intelligence or wisdom, that's what remind me of this. You're rewarding players for actually having, like, truly bad dump stats here. In this case, it requires intelligence 9 or lower. But anybody that tries to read your thoughts, sense your emotions, or otherwise communicate with you telepathically takes psychic damage and then if when you fail a mental check intelligence wisdom or charisma save or uh, uh saving throw or check uh you can use your reaction to inflict a pretty big penalty on enemies where they take psychic damage they can't take reactions they have disadvantage on attacks because you just say something so stupefyingly ignorant that's fucking hilarious not only is it funny it's a great character concept, and that's a mechanically useful ability that's really kind of clever, which is just kind of a microcosm of how all of these different feats work. By the way, if Squirrel Master is actually a reference to Half-Baked, the character that Tommy Chong plays in that prison sequence, um, holy shit, I watched that movie all the time in high school. I thought it was amazing. Um, I don't know if it holds up to this day, but I watched so much Half-Baked, and as soon as I saw Squirrel Master, I was like, oh shit, that's, <laughs> that's it, Squirrel Master. Um, I don't, so if that's a reference, shout out to whoever actually put that feed together. So generally I'm, I'm positive on this, uh, entire supplement. It looks gorgeous, which I expected it to from Gordon McAlpin. Um, but the feats are not just humorous. They're actually mechanically sound. They're interesting. Um, I think there's enough variety here between specifically abilities that you can perform in combat or things that just give you different traits and backgrounds. Um, there's a few that even have a little give or take, like they've got a positive and a negative trait, like uh, I believe Liquid Courage. Uh, when you imbibe three or more alcoholic drinks, you gain, um, uh, advan or it's your proficiency bonus to all your physical stats, strength, constitution, and charisma, but you have disadvantage on dexterity, intelligence, and wisdom. Makes sense. Um, and then Influencer is interesting because you have advantage on charisma checks against anybody who recognizes you, but you have disadvantage on uh, 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 stealth and sleight of hand because you can't, you know, they're, they're noticing you left and right, so you can't really get out of their way. Um, really, really fun, interesting concept to give it uh, kind of a give or take there. So a lot of neat ideas uh, just in feats in general. I think it's well designed and it is also very humorous and fun. There's a lot of fun ideas. Um, a few of them do feel like they're kind of that inspiring leader-esque, like, are you really ever going to use this kind of a feat? Like Micromanager and Monotonous Monologist um, just doesn't seem like it would actually um, come up that often, and it's not that of exciting an ability. But for the most part, there's only maybe a handful of those, and there's over 40 here. So for the most part, you're going to get a really good ratio of just fun, useful feats. But as I mentioned, I would wholeheartedly recommend just let your players choose a feat at level one. I think it's a really fun uh, house rule that we should all use because feats are cool. Feats are fun. Um, they they should be, you know, character defining things without that um, overwhelming sense of, oh, God, I have to prepare and build my whole character build right off the bat you know, in order to reach that maximum efficiency. I, I'm glad that 5e is getting away from that kind of min-maxer thing, although that's still kind of there for people that want to engage with it. But just give people a fun chance to role-play and define their character and their unique personalities through feats like this goes a long way uh, towards just starting out at uh, level one, just having that one really useful feat. Uh, let's go over my pros and cons, because it's a pretty short book. Uh, for Feats Don't Fail Me Now. Uh, pros, dozens of fun feat ideas and concepts that are mostly balanced. I didn't see anything that was particularly crazy. I, I think the uh, the combat melodramatist where you could instantly pop somebody back up might have been the only one. I mean, you can only do it once per long rest, so that helps. That might be the only one that I was like, ooh, that's really good. And only because you have two abilities and one of them is just way better than the other one, which is to gain advantage. Um, but it's really hard for me to comment on the balance because, again, the, the, even the ones from the player's handbook, I think, frankly, like Sharpshooter, are just way unbalanced. So it's kind of odd to... I will say one nice thing I'm seeing here for, through a lot of feats is a lot of them give you that half ASI. They give you an increase of a stat that would be relevant there, or for a few of them, it's just, hey, increase one of your stats by one, uh, which is very nice to see so that you're not... You don't feel like you're behind the power curve of players that are just choosing that ASI every four levels. 
Uh, Pro, of course, the wonderful original artwork from Gordon McAlban, which I absolutely adore. Really fun to see here. Not just the cover art, but kind of pictures throughout. Really lovely. Cons, none. I mean, this this sets out exactly what it what it's trying to do, which is create a lot of uh, humorous, fun feats that are mechanically sound. And I think it absolutely succeeds at that. Final verdict, more than a joke book, but still funny. Feats Don't Fail Me Now provides clever and fun feats that emphasize character building, role playing, Plenty of laughter. Thank you to watching. Thank you to everyone for watching this video review. You can see my written review at roguewatson.com. You can support my work at patreon.com slash roguewatson. Follow our own D&D adventures here on my YouTube channel. Thank you.